tell me about Terrell growing up in Florida, Liberty City, Florida. Who was that young man, and how did he become this man that I'm looking at right now? Well, I grew up in I grew up in Liberty City primarily, but for about five years of my life, this time that I'm chron- I'm chronicling through David David Makes Man, I lived in a place called Homestead, Florida, which is a suburb or a city in the south south of Miami, about 50 miles south. Um, my mother moved there from Liberty City because she felt like you know, like most mothers do, the the city was getting hard. It was in the you know the peak of the crack epidemic, and she said, you know, I'm gonna move you you all out to the projects, but the projects in the country. So this will be you know they won't be able to get you here. Um, and you hmm. know, was she right? No, mm. <laughs> no. I mean, but a mother's love, right? That's right. That's so right. we moved that far out, and at the same time, we you know that's where I started the gifted uh, full time gifted program, where I was being bused about 30 minutes, 40 minutes from my home. Um, to this predominantly white school um, for a magnet program in the humanities Mm. where I met, you know, again, teachers like Dr. Woods Trapp who were black teachers knowing that they would see this black boy coming from where I came from and say to me, you know, hey, I see you. I see you Mm. in this program and I need you to, you know, do better, act better because, you know, um, and I think one of the one of the things that was really interesting to me is that if it if it weren't for Hurricane Andrew, which um, destroyed most of Homestead um, in in 1992, um, I probably would have stayed and matriculated through that program and fi- and gone through it and figured out you know what step to make next. Mm. And I just wanted to look at those moments again, like we talk talked about how these young folks, how young folks, young young women, uh, uh, young uh, queer black kids. Uh, and have to at some moment sort of make a whole bunch of decisions about where, what they want to do. I don't know how many people, every time I ask this question, most people uh, have an answer to, but if you were in the talented and gifted program, mm. um, you, you're, you're then asked, you know, what high school do you want to go to? What do you want to specialize in? You want to go to a baccalaureate program? You want to specialize in languages? You want to, and, it, and it's like, well, let's slow down. Yeah. Because maybe that kid doesn't even have deodorant to wear to school. Maybe yeah. that kid's not eating right. Like, yeah. are there other things that might be on that student's minds? Um, and and like that, you know, I would go to school and sort of be thinking about, you know, food and shelter and rent and lights and phone bills, um, but also needing to think about, you know, the the career, my scholastic career ahead. Um, and I think I still think that's a lot of pressure to put on young folks. And if we alleviate, if we sort of um, assuage some of that pressure, if we took some of that anxiety off of them, what could they become? 